Hi guys, my name's Jack Nagel and I've been in recovery for over 10 years now and completely transformed my life out of addictive patterns. And with Real Drug Talk and our treatment company called Connection Based Living, I've helped hundreds of other people completely change their life as well. Like Haley, who's over six years in recovery, you can check her story out on our YouTube channel. And James, who's over two years in recovery now, you can also check his story out on our YouTube channel. Um, because of the mad times that we live in, uh, we have put together a book. It's called The 11 Definitive Steps to Transform Your Life Out of Addictive Patterns Without Having to Go to Rehab. You can find it by scrolling down in the description that I'm pointing at here. If you just scroll down and click that link, it'll take you to the special offer on the book. It's super cheap. Um, and also you get some free bonuses along with it as well. So if you're looking to transform out of addictive patterns and get some change and you know have things to be different and joyful and have some freedom in your life i'd highly recommend taking a look at this book it could be the most important thing you read um, in 2021 and 2022 moving forward um, into the video guys peace and and that's the other thing i wanted to ask you about like in terms of mental health and stuff um like what part because that's look I'll, I'll just be honest. I'm a lover of footy. I like, you know, just as a fan, watch it all day, every day. Um, and then the thing that I find absolutely ridiculous is like all the shows that go along with it and like the media and stuff, like how much of a effect does that have on people's like mental health, you know? And did you find, I don't know that there probably was like just whether it's about your performance that the, the, the part where I find that kind of steps over the line is that when, yeah, these kind of podge podge footy journalists are starting to write about like people's personal life and stuff like that. Like, you, you know, like did, was there ever cases that that had an impact on your mental health or, or mates and stuff that you played the game with that that really impacts them? Uh, I think early, yeah, like definitely, um, definitely early on, like particularly around performance, like when you're, you know, when you're sort of not that established and, you know, anything written about your performance you sort of get defensive about and it's like yeah you, you can sort of um hold it over journalists for that sort of stuff and yeah uh, yeah I, I think i think there's i think there is like a, a bit in it when it comes to um particularly young guys reading up this sort of stuff um i think a combination of me getting older and then obviously having done a fair bit of a fair bit of work on myself and being really just comfortable with who I am and not giving a shit what anyone else thinks yeah. um, had a big part to play in the fact that I honestly couldn't give a shit what the media do these days. Like, yeah. In, in, as far as I'm concerned, um, they're only after one thing and that's to sell papers. That's the, you know, their, their grand final is breaking a new story. Like, <laughs> that. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, like, they they all fight over a one, the one story. There's so many of them now and they're all trying to break that one story that, it, you know, there's that they come from different angles. They put that many different twists on it. Um, and before you know it, you've got rumours started. And, and that's where, like, probably it affected me a fair bit. Like, I, I was succumb to a lot of um, rumours that weren't true about me. And that was probably one of the harder things because, you know, you, you get people that you actually care about reading the stuff and, um it, it, it impacts them as well, not just me. So it's, yeah. and it's, and it can be, it, some of the stuff said can be quite hurtful. And like, none of, I haven't seen one rumor that's ever been true. And <laughs> the thing with the media is there's no accountability for the media. Like they can, yeah. they want and get away with it. And, you know, I've seen some journalists and there still are, there's still journalists in footy that are just, they're, they're pretty average people um, to say the least. And, Yep. You know, I've seen I've seen some of these journalists literally at nightclubs waiting at nightclubs for players to do something wrong, um, and it's just like you're wanting to report all the bad things. Um, you know, there's 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 lots of guys out there doing really good things. Yeah. Um, you know, look for instance, you know, I was only in the paper a couple of days ago for having an argument with a well, not even it wasn't even an argument. It was something to do with my wife's thirtieth birthday, and I was right. <laughs> And um, yeah, this this lady that I had the venue booked with decided to cancel on me, and um, she was really rude about it. And 
I, I just, you know, let her know, I expressed that I wasn't happy about her being rude to me. Um, because yeah. that caused me a lot of stress and anxiety around actually trying to find another venue at such short, like short notice for my yeah. wife. It's like, it's an important birthday. Um, and I wanted to make it, you know, really nice for her. And, um, because I've put her through a lot as well over the last few years. So like, I wanted to do something nice for her and, you know, that sort of triggered me off. And, um, then all of a sudden she's ringing up the radio. Oh my God. <laughs> her, you know, time in the sun and, then I've got newspapers ringing me and it's like, <laughs> oh my God. are you serious? Like you actually want to report this? Like, God, start reporting stuff that actually matters. Like this is just yeah. garbage. Like, you know, start, start, you know, start reporting the fact that, you know, six out of eight people that kill themselves every day are males. Start, start writing some stuff that actually matters in this, in society. Like I just feel like a lot of the shit that's written these days is just literally for people to click on. And for their own egos, really, because they wrote the article. It's um, yeah, it's kind of it's just it's a sad sort of. Way, but and and it's saying I've met some good journalists, like I've met some yeah. respectful journalists that literally don't write things um to hurt people. Where there's other journalists out there that literally just couldn't give a shit other than anyone like by themselves. So yeah, yeah I, it's something that you know players have to deal with constantly. Um, and the common theme that's thrown out there is, well, it's part of your job and you get paid well enough. But I don't think anyone should have to put up with some of the shit that they read half the time without having a chance to defend themselves either. That's, that's the annoying thing. Just a quick interruption to let you guys know that we've created a complete new book called The 11 Definitive Steps to Get Recovery Without Going to Rehab. And for a short time only, we've got a super special deal on it uh, where you can get the book for a heavily discounted price, plus some free bonuses, the book audio recorded and a free self-care planner that I've used to help me start my day and finish my day in a really uh, nice and freeing fashion. So if that's of interest to you and you're looking for some answers on how to get some transformation out of addiction without having to lock yourself away in rehab for ages, maybe you might want to check out the book search for it in the description below back to the video peace yeah yeah 100 percent. no i always often see it um and just think it's madness and then particularly yeah when it gets into people's like personal lives and and then if they yeah if, if someone does have some some genuine issues going on like the way that that can be reported on is just it's horrible so um, yeah, that it's, it's, it's something that as a fan, I would actually, you know, like to see change. Cause most people I talk to that are fans, like they don't give a stuff. They just want to hear about the actual game, um, yeah. and not people's personal lives. So uh, the, the sort of the last thing that I wanted to ask you about, cause I, I actually think it's the most interesting thing about your story and, and the coolest thing, you know, we started off the top talking about you know changing the perception around you know leadership and what strength is and all that sort of stuff so can you talk us through like you know what it's like to kind of dip into those low lows of mental health and then how you've kind of found your way out with the art and and you know like finding these different passions in your life um well i guess it's like you know the old tale out of every negative you can always find something positive and i guess for me um my first my first stay at re in rehab was in Sydney and that's where I first was introduced to some, you know, just some left of field sort of alternative forms of therapy and yeah. um, yoga, yoga was sort of one of them. And I actually really enjoyed doing yoga. Um, yeah. Sort of dropped off a bit now, but I, the other thing I really enjoyed doing was, um, you know, just art, like getting creative with my hands and yeah. um, just giving, throwing, myself different stimulants to be able to like just give my brain a bit of a break and focus on like just alternative things and it was so beneficial for me um i remember like the first the first thing i ever did was um it was like a form of japanese art and i cracked a ceramic bowl and um put it back together with like some gold glue and it's like nice it, it looks yeah it visually it looks pretty cool but it wasn't really like about that it was more about the process and yeah, how, how I felt post that. And I remember, um, you know, and you might know this yourself, but when you're in rehab, everything's pretty structured, like dinners at certain times. Yeah, And it's sort of like that, probably like that, you know, that way to try and get some structure back into people's lives. Um, because when you're feeling like shit, that's sort of 
one thing that goes out of the window, any sort of structure or normality just, it just becomes chaos. Your life's chaos. Um, and for me, I remember having, when I first spent some time in the art room, it was like 10 to six. And then we had dinner at seven and that hour and 10 minutes just flew by. And that was like such a, like a breakthrough moment for me because usually like I, um, you know, don't usually in that time, I'll either be doing something destructive or, um, making myself just feel even shitter and shitter yeah. and to actually do something that was constructive and like, you know, just refreshing, like different, um, just made, left me feel I'm like really good. And me being me, obviously, like once I pick something up and enjoy doing it, I would go 110 miles at it and I just like attack it with everything I've got. So yeah, spent every single day in the art room from that point on. Um, <laughs> and it was more like the environment, like, really relaxed environment, environment, like full of color, like music, um, you know, obviously you're doing stuff with your hands. And um, I think it's actually been proved, probably know more about this than me, but I think it's actually been proven now that, you know, getting creative with your hands actually has an, you know, improves your mental health. So I, I can definitely vouch for that. Like it's definitely helped me enormously. And, and I guess from there, I just implemented it back into my life when I got out of rehab and I continued to do it. And um, I guess my profile sort of helped me a little bit get my business off the ground because yep. you know, people were, um, you know, people were buying some of the artwork that I was doing. And from there, like I literally, I'm pretty inquisitive. Like I like learning new things and um, I, I, I'm, you know, a big believer that you can never know too much. Like it's always about like learning different things, like, you know, bouncing ideas off different people, learning from other people's experiment uh, experiences, different trades, like, so I, I started like getting more and more into um, working with epoxy. So epoxy resin, which yep. I've seen lots of on online. Like I love really, it. It looks so cool. Yeah. yeah. So much you can do with it. It's just a really popular industry. And um, especially for like DIYs and people wanting to sort of have a, have a genuine hobby. Um, so I deal with, you know, these sort of people every single day, like people just wanting to try something different and, often I get people in here all the time that have gone through similar things to me and they come in here literally because they feel like they can relate to me and yeah, I get to meet new people and talk about, you know, my experiences, what worked for me, what helped me. And, um, you know, also run workshops now and like I get more, more and more people now coming to these, like, because they've sort of turned into like a two part, um, like a two part workshop. Like the first sort of hour is um, I'm quite open about how this, this form of um you know therapy has actually helped me yeah and then from there you know people start opening up sharing their stories and it's like you're just creating like i'm creating an environment that's non-judgmental and people feel like they're a part of something and they can express themselves and you know some of the stories that people have told have just been like mind-blowing like that people have come in and actually felt comfortable you know sharing some of the things that they've shared and it wasn't ever by design like the workshops were really just to teach people about a new skill. Um, yeah. It just, it just turned into this, like, it's almost like group therapy for like the first hour. It's um, yeah. Yeah, bloody cool. And like, for me, it's like, I, I, I really like sharing my story with other people because um, I feel like the more times I share it, the more times people think it's okay to share these things. And um, yeah. it just opens up people's eyes to, I guess, two things like that mental health's real and like, and it can affect anyone. And it actually also gets people to see the real side of me. Um, yeah. Not, not what they just seen on TV or their perception about what they read as we're talking about in the newspapers, the newspapers have a big say on what people actually think of you um, without yeah. actually knowing you. So for me, every time I get, I have the opportunity to talk to someone or have someone at a workshop, it's another opportunity for me to actually show what I'm really like as a person and like not, not just what they've seen on the screen or what they read. So yeah, the business has done like just wonders for my mental health. And um, it's also like a double-edged sword. I'm also able to teach people a new skill and then, you know, give them the products to go away and potentially sort of, you know, start like I've got lots of people now who've started up with small businesses selling things and it's, yeah, it's just a really cool, rewarding and something that I'm really passionate about as well. So it's, um, yeah, I'm finding it, yeah, really, really good. And I guess for me, I didn't have to worry about that transition out of football because this has sort of naturally just happened for me. And, um, yeah, like I said, it's such a growing and popular industry that I'm just enjoying. And 
um, I still enjoy doing stuff like this and um, going out to, you know, different sporting organisations and just sharing my story, my experiences and yeah. trying to help any other people that I can because it's really like, for me, I get so much enjoyment out of um, trying to just help someone in the smallest way that I can. Um, it's, you never, you just never know that the impact that you can have on someone just by doing something so small. And I think the position that I'm in, I can never really take that for granted. Like whilst I'm still relevant in any way, I'll always try and use my social media platforms or um, use my voice in a positive way because, you know, that's, that's the stuff that's really impacting people. Hope you enjoyed that video and thanks for supporting the Real Drug Talk YouTube channel. Every video you watch, comment, subscribe to helps us to push through the YouTube algorithms and hopefully reach more people and help them out. Now, listen, we're living in the most crazy times for the past hundred years. And because of that, as I mentioned throughout this video, we've created a brand new um, ebook that we have a special deal on called The 11 Definitive Steps to Transforming Out of Addictive Patterns Without Having to Go to Rehab. So if that sounds of interest to you, check out the links below. You can click on it and claim the super special deal that we have on it at the moment. Again, hope you and your family are doing okay and we'd love for you to check out the rest of the videos on our channels and share them with anyone else that you think it might help. See you in the next video. Peace.